Here are 50 random facts about Clash of Clans episode 10. Yeah, it's about that time again, goddamn. As usual, the previous episodes will be linked down below and also at the end of the video in case you want to check those out. But other than that, let's just jump straight into it. If you manage to cover an entire village with overgrowth spells, when you deploy your army, they will just stand around and do nothing. Then when the spell duration is over, they'll continue to do whatever they're supposed to do. The painter's scenery was partly inspired by Holi, a festival that takes place in India that celebrates the triumph of good over evil. Throwing various colors is part of the celebration, which is referenced in the loading screen as well. The hero pet Frosty spawns Frostmites, which is where the temporary bag of Frostmite spell originated from. However, both of these almost had a completely different name, as before its release, the mites from Frosty were called Ice Mites. It's possible for your Clan War League week to have one day of rest called Break Round. This happens when there is an odd number of brackets, causing clans to not have an opponent for all of the days in the war. This is incredibly rare and seems to be mostly caused by a bug. Stash obstacles still count toward the spawn limit of 45, so if you have too many stashed away and aren't seeing any bushes and trees spawning anymore, that's probably the reason why. However, this doesn't count special obstacles that still spawn regardless of how many you have, so you don't have to worry about missing out on any of those. Have you ever won Wonder what would happen if a defense finished its upgrade during an attack? Well, as it turns out, based on this clip of a Taho weapon upgrade, it simply wakes up and starts attacking. So far, the most buildings that can fit in a builder's repair radius is 38. I don't know why you'd ever need to know that, but interestingly, we got to this number by a bit of a competition on Reddit. The description of the Queen of the North Archer Queen skin says, We heard that the cold never bothered her anyways, which is a reference to the movie Frozen when one of the characters sings a similar line. Cold never bothered me anyway. The blacksmith, for whatever reason, is immune to spell damage, despite not being able to steal any ores from it anyways. On a unrelated note, it is also the only building in the home village that does not change with every level. Placing the skeleton spell on top of multiple walls will render it useless, as it eliminates any spawn location the spell could have had. So no skeletons ever come out of it, even if walls are broken after the fact. In the Dragon Palace scenery, there is a weird looking tree with what seems to be light beams coming out of it. This is actually a reference to a tree in the movie Avatar 2 called Iwa, the Tree of Souls. Loading screens usually hang around for weeks or even months, but the record for the shortest running loading screen goes to the Books of Clash, which only lasted a few days. This is because it was present when the Books of Clash scenery came out, which was at the end of a season, right before a new loading screen replaced it. According to community manager Darian, the original concept for the Root Rider started as a ENT being, which is basically a species of walking trees from the Lord of the Rings series. However, it felt too unoriginal, and we ended up with the Root Rider we're all familiar with. The very first thing you max and never have to worry about again is the Spring and Skeleton Trap, which is maxed at Town Hall 10. The Spiky Cactus is the only special obstacle not associated with a reoccurring event. Others follow a yearly cycle, like Lunar New Year, Christmas, Anniversary, and Halloween. It's definitely weird that this one is an obstacle and not a decoration, especially how most people only got one of these. The stone structure standing in the forest of the magic scenery is called a monolith, which is basically just a stone structure standing tall in the middle of nowhere. This is referencing the signature defense you unlock at Town Hall 15, the monolith. Upgrading a barracks, spell factory, or the siege workshop will still allow you to use it as normal, but at 50% of its normal speed, so everything will take twice as long. I don't know who needs to hear this, but clicking on the ore in the star bonus screen now shows you exactly how much you'll be getting the same way it does in Clan Wars. It's not super obvious that these icons are clickable. The original idea for the spell tower was defensive spells that could be donated to a clan castle and it would drop when the clan castle was destroyed. But after brainstorming for a bit, it was decided that a spell tower was the better approach. 
In the Snow Day scenery, there is a frozen barbarian outside of a hedge maze, directly referencing a scene in the 1980 movie called The Shining, where one of the characters is seen frozen after getting lost in the hedge maze. In July 2022, a mysterious arcade cabinet appeared in everyone's bases for the game's anniversary. You could play two mini games on it, Clash 1982 and Clash Dash 1992. However, there was a third game called Clash Cradle of Darkness 2002 that was not available due to several issues. This game was a third person action RPG that put you in the shoes of a barbarian on a quest to defeat the Goblin Chief. <laughs> no one ever got to play the game, but there is footage of it and it looked like a pretty decent pastime and it's unfortunate we never got to try it. The Battle Drill Siege Machine had a name change before its release. It was originally named Driller, but the developers thought Battle Drill was cooler. The dragon on a level 15 barracks lights up and the wind sog rises when troops are getting trained in it. If you're attacked by someone using a overgrowth spell, the spell will leave a residue on your village that can be collected for elixir, just as you can with tombstones. Although it may seem the giant arrow's travel distance is infinite, it's actually not. If she fires from one corner of the base to the opposite corner, you can see it goes about 55 tiles. As you can see in this cliff, that wasn't quite enough to reach a building on the opposite corner. The pupils of the goblin builder are gems. For Halloween 2015, lightning spells had a temporary effect of spawning bats around it. However, the bats didn't do anything, it was just an effect, and it wouldn't be another three years before we got an actual bat spell. You can practice attacking your own clan capital districts by going to them, opening the chat, and clicking on challenge. The battle machine uses the same roar the Barbarian King does, but in a deeper pitch. This can also be seen with the Royal Champion, as her default ability sound is the same as the Eagle Artillery's last shot, with an increased pitch and slightly lower tempo. Despite the Town Hall and Builder being classified as a defense, they are not treated as defense structures when they're upgrading, so you'll see defense targeting troops walk right by them. It is now possible to have a total of 8 Builders in your village doing an upgrade or gearing something up at the same time. 5 Normal Builders, 2 Master Builders, and the Goblin Worker. The Air Sleeper can push air units out of the map, but especially the healer because it doesn't move, so it'll just keep getting pushed pretty far. For Halloween 2023, there was a temporary troop called the Barcher, which was referencing a meme from 2014 of a new troop idea of the same name. According to developers, you can expect a new Town Hall level every year now. <laughs> In contrast, the previous town halls had an unofficial timeline of 18 months. Early concept designs show that the Super Minion almost had a gun to throw its rockets. Recalling only sub troops with a recall spell like skeletons, lava pups, a big boy, and other sub troops will show up in the recall spell as unidentified troops. Before Town Hall 16 was available to the public, you could merge 6 cannons and archer towers, meaning you could have 3 ricochet cannons and multi archer towers. However, at launch you could only have 2 of each. It's unknown why the change or if this will ever come back. The Overgrowth spell is the first Dark Elixir spell to take up 2 housing space. This can also be seen by the vials of each spell. All of them are fairly slim, except for the Overgrowth spell which has the bigger and rounder bottle similar to other spells that take up to housing space. However, nowadays this is probably irrelevant as there's very little distinction between elixir and dark elixir spells other than the building that they supposedly come from. When the giant attacks a building, a puff of smoke rises from that building. All heroes have this cool little snooze letters when they're regenerating and you've most likely seen it somewhere but not in your base. You actually can't see it with your own heroes only when visiting someone else's base that has the heroes regenerating. Before the loot car had its own little space to spawn, you could freely move it with a shovel. This allowed players to keep it around as a mini storage and move it as necessary. But eventually they gave it its own place so that you didn't have to waste a shovel on it. 
This is what five upgrades finishing at the same time looks like, and it's pretty awesome. But this is actually not possible under normal circumstances. What this player did was start all five upgrades at different times, but when an update reduced the timers from 18 days to 13, they all had exactly 13 days left when he logged on, thus allowing him to bless us with a truly satisfying clip. Tapping on the Grand Builder in any district will make him grunt. You probably already knew that, but did you know it gets louder if you zoom in and quieter if you zoom out? Goblins do more damage than a barbarian, even when they're not attacking resource buildings. At lower levels, you can tell what level a log launcher is by counting the amount of connections it has in the front of it. Unfortunately though, at level 5, it seems they ran out of space to add a fifth connection, so yeah. One starry ore has a value of 35 gems. Overflowing a clan castle is not possible, it's not like a storage where you can buy more and put it in there regardless. However, there is a neat and also useless trick that is cool regardless. If you're in a clan that gives you more storage with its perks, then leave that clan and join a lower level clan that gives you less storage, the clan castle will appear to be overflowing with resources. In the Chinese version of Clash of Clans, skeletons have been changed to resemble something more like robots that look like skeletons. This is due to some weird laws around skeletons in games. All skins in the game are modeled in a software called Blender, animated in Maya, and then rendered in the game with an in-house engine. Although it may seem the queen's giant arrow shoots whatever direction she's facing, that's not always the case. If the Arch Queen isn't facing anything in particular, but has already determined her path, she'll shoot to the nearest building in that path. So guys, that wraps it up. I can't believe we got to 10 episodes, Jesus. I didn't even think we'd go past four, but here we are. I love doing these videos, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far as much as I have enjoyed researching for these sometimes useless facts. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you guys next time.